The third prophecy of Fatima is one of the most curious predictions related to the church. Are we on the brink of witnessing the unfolding of a divine revelation, or is there more to this story than meets the eye? Join us on this journey as we delve into the cryptic messages, explore the historical context, and reveal the shocking truth about why the third prophecy is about to be revealed this year. The Three Secrets of Fatima is a series of profound visions and prophecies disclosed by three young Portuguese shepherds, Lucia Santos, along with her cousins Jacinta and Francisca Marto. Back in 1917, the trio claimed to have encountered the Virgin Mary on six separate occasions between May and October of that year, and this celestial visitation is now known as Our Lady of Fatima. Fast forward to July 13th, 1917, around noon, when something extraordinary occurred. The Virgin Mary, in her divine wisdom, entrusted the children with three secrets. It wasn't until 1941 that two of these secrets were unveiled through a document written by Lucia, responding to the request of Bishop Jose Alves Correa da Silva. The revelations were intended to assist in publishing a book about Jacinta. But this is where things start to get really mysterious. The third secret, shrouded in mystery, took a bit longer to surface. In 1943, the bishop urged Lucia to reveal it, but she hesitated, not entirely convinced that God had given her the clear go-ahead. Yet, the bishop insisted, and in October 1943, Lucia broke down the secret, sealing it in an envelope, and giving strict instructions not to open it until 1960, under the belief that by then, it will appear clearer. The contents of this enigmatic secret were finally disclosed by Pope John Paul II in the year 2000. Though some skeptics argue that it might not be the entire secret, the Vatican stands firm in its assertions. Now, what do these secrets entail? Catholic interpretations suggest that they involve profound matters such as hell, the tumultuous events of World War I and World War II, and the persecutions faced by Christians in the 20th century. Delving further into the realm of Marian apparitions, it's worth noting that among the hundreds investigated by the Catholic Church, only 12 have received its official approval. Surprisingly, nine of these occurrences took place between 1830 and 1933. This small fraction of acknowledged events prompts reflection on their significance. Cultural anthropologists Victor and Edith Turner, who embraced Catholicism in 1958, once saw the surge in Marian apparition cults as a reaction from a disenfranchised lower middle class grappling with the swift changes of a post-industrial culture. Now let's zoom in on Lucia Santos, one of the key figures in the Fatima revelations, and this is where things get really interesting. At the tender age of 14, she was sent to the Sisters of St. Dorothy's School in Villar, near Porto. In 1928, Lucia took the next step, becoming a postulant at the Dorothean convent in Tui, just across the Spanish border. Remarkably, throughout her life, Lucia continued to report private visions intermittently. During the 1930s, the Bishop of Leiria urged Lucia, who adopted the religious name of Sister Maria Lucia das Torres, to pen her memoirs. This effort aimed to unveil more details about her cousins and the 1917 apparitions. Interestingly, the notion of a secret entrusted to the children during the apparitions emerged as early as July 1917. Lucia hinted that this secret carried consequences, both good and bad, for different individuals. However, it wasn't until her third memoir composed in 1941 that she delved more profoundly into the secret's content. In a pattern similar to the French visionary Melanie Calvat, who revealed secrets from the Our Lady of La Salette apparition almost two decades later, Lucia disclosed that the secrets had three parts. The first two were unveiled in 1941, with the third being committed to paper on January 3, 1944. During the mid-1943, when Sister Lucia, then with the Dorothean sisters in Tui, Spain fell seriously ill. Fearing that her life might slip away before she could disclose the remaining part of the secret, the Bishop of Leria urgently requested her to put pen to paper. In obedience and in the middle of the agony of her illness, Sister Lucia painstakingly transcribed the third secret onto a single sheet of paper. With solemn care, she placed it within an envelope, sealing it as proof of the gravity of its contents. Before we delve into Sister Lucia's testimony, it's crucial to consider the words of then-Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. He provides context to the revelation, acknowledging the speculation and controversy that shrouded the third secret for many years. 
In his theological commentary titled The Message of Fatima, Cardinal Ratzinger notes that the contents of the long-guarded envelope might be disappointing to some. Cardinal Ratzinger states that a careful examination of the third secret might not solve a major puzzle or portend future events. Rather, it presents the Church of the Martyrs from the recently concluded century in a symbolic language that's difficult to understand. Examining the revelations of Fatima leads us to wonder about the intentions behind a communication from the Mother of the Lord to Christianity and humanity during a time of great turmoil. Do these lessons apply to problems we will face this year, or are they just windows into the minds of kids who grew up in an environment of intense religiosity but were also affected by the upheavals of their time? And in what sense is this vision significant, and how should we interpret it? Now, let's take a look at what happened and what the three young shepherds witnessed. And this is where it gets really shocking. In 1943, Sister Lucia, under obedience to God, the Bishop of Leria and the Blessed Mother, wrote the following description of the third part of the secret revealed to her and her two sons on July 13th, 1917. I write in obedience to you, my God, who commands me to do so through His Excellency, the Bishop of Leria, and through your Most Holy Mother and mine. After the two parts which I have already explained, at the left of Our Lady and a little above, we saw an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand, flushing. It gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire, but they died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated toward him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance! 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 Other bishops, priests, men and women, religious, going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough hewn trunks, as of a cork tree with a bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city, half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him, and in the same way there died one after another the other bishops, priests, men and religious women, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross, there were two angels, each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs, and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. The scenes Sister Lucia recounted are nothing short of intense and vividly descriptive. One can only imagine the impact on the three young visionaries as they received profound prophetic secrets of Fatima on that significant day. The words and visions bestowed by God and the Blessed Mother are not confined to the past. They resonate as a message for all of us. Sister Lucia's interpretation of the third secret shared almost four decades later in May 1982 in a letter to Pope John Paul II sheds light on the symbolic nature of the revelation. In her words, she explains, the third part of the secret refers to Our Lady's words. If not, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the Church. The good will be martyred, the Holy Father will have much to suffer, various nations will be annihilated. This interpretation frames the third secret as a symbolic revelation tied to a critical aspect of the message, the acceptance or rejection of the calls made within it. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world. Finally, the long-anticipated revelation of the third secret of Fatima unfolded. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith highlights that Pope John Paul II's decision to make this secret public marks the conclusion of a historical period ruined by human lust for power and evil. Yet, it is also a period filled with the merciful love of God and the vigilant care of the Mother of Jesus and the Church. The narrative of Fatima underscores two fundamental pillars shaping human history. The action of God, the Lord of history, and the co-responsibility of humanity in the drama of its creative freedom. Our Lady, who graced Fatima with her apparitions, revives these forgotten values, reminding us that the future of humanity rests in God. She emphasizes that we are not passive observers, but active, responsible partners in the creation of our shared future. The third secret, safeguarded until 1960, marked a pivotal moment in church history. 
Sister Lucia, entrusted with a secret, faced resistance in revealing it, but secured its placement in the secret archives of the Holy Office in 1957. Pope John XXIII in 1959 hesitated to disclose the secret, and Pope Paul VI in 1965 chose to keep it sealed, returning it to the archives. The veil of secrecy persisted until a crucial juncture. Following the attempt on Pope John Paul II's life in 1981, he turned to Fatima for solace. Reading the third secret, he believed the Blessed Mother had intervened, sparing his life on the 64th anniversary of her apparitions. Controversy surrounding the public revelation in 2000, with doubts about authenticity and conspiracy theories. In response to doubts, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, in The Message of Fatima, emphasized the authenticity of the revealed text. Sister Lucia confirmed the Vatican's version, stating that everything had been published and no secret remains. Any notions of hidden revelations were dispelled, with Sister Lucia declaring that if she had received new messages, she would have communicated them directly to the Holy Father. Before her passing in 2005, Sister Lucia ensured that Our Lady's words and messages were revealed to the world at the appropriate time. The consecration of the world, including Russia, to Mary's Immaculate Heart had been made appropriately, fulfilling the wishes of the Blessed Mother. The controversies surrounding the Third Secret, fueled by speculation and suspicion, were addressed, bringing a sense of clarity and finality to the historic revelations of Fatima.